We're here with Jose Mas, President and CEO of Mas Tech. Thank you so much for being with us today, Jose. We're actually at the Minority Media and Telecom Council's uh, access, to, uh, access to Capital Conference. And we've been talking a lot about wireless and telecom. And as the CEO of Mas Tech, which is a multi-billion dollar infrastructure company that does a fair amount of, deep, of work in the wireless and broadband space, um, I was kind of interested in seeing what your thoughts are around the challenges that Mas Tech has experienced um, in being able to really excel in this wireless space and to really uh, create more business opportunities for the company in the wireless industry. Well, first of all, we're in an unbelievable industry. You know, we got into the wireless industry in 2008. Uh, it was a time in which uh, wireless spending was starting to increase. The, the advent of the iPhone came to be and we had just gotten into the business and all of a sudden uh, AT&T was our biggest customer and, and they were obviously facing a lot of network pressure because there was so much more data going through the devices than had historically happened. So it was a time of a lot of change and, and we were able to participate in that, take advantage of that and really grow our business significantly because of that. So today wireless is, is one of the biggest pieces of what Mostic does. Uh, it's an exciting industry. One of the things that I like best about it is, is we know it's going to change. So I think one of the great things about this industry is that it's always evolving and changing. And the challenges that it creates for companies like ours is you have to be nimble. You have to be ready to react. You have to constantly be uh, understanding what's, what's around the corner in terms of technology and what's coming and how can you set yourself up to, to best accomplish that. So, you know, a little bit of it for us was luck in terms of, you know, we really got into it at the right time and all of a sudden the networks were having a lot of issues. The reality is we still face that. You know, I think that the adoption of data is happening at a much faster rate than everybody could, anybody could have ever expected or dreamed of. And the, the carriers are still facing the same network issues. So, you know, we still need a lot more network capacity for the carriers to ultimately deliver the types of services that are already available. And all of them aren't delivered, but they're available to be innovated and, and, and put in the marketplace and, and, and we can play our role in that. So I think what's, what's really important is, for, is to make sure that as an industry, um, government is really doing the things that it can to foster investment and foster um, the carriers and give them more opportunity like Spectrum. I think Spectrum is a, a very critical component of what's happening in the wireless industry. Um, companies have the investment to make. They want to invest the dollars, but the, the spectrum might not necessarily be in the right places with the people that want to invest the money. So one of, one of the challenges that we face is you know, everybody talks about spectrum and, it's, and it's, it's a huge opportunity. And there's some people that hold spectrum today that can't afford to really build out the spectrum. So in essence, it's kind of stranded spectrum. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, we, you know, we should have an overabundance of spectrum. I'm, I'm of the belief that spectrum should be available. It should be available to everyone. Um, you know, obviously this is a highly capital intensive business from a carrier's perspective. You've got to put a lot of money out there to, to make your networks run. Uh, and I think policy has to support that. We're in a tough economic period. You know, the, there's a, still a lot of unemployment out there. There's still a lot of questions about a double dip recession. You know, what happens as, as the next couple of years go on through the election cycle? You know, are we going to see another dip at the beginning of 2013? I hope not. I don't think we will. Uh, but anything that we can do to spur economic growth and spur you know, job creation, we need to be doing. And this is a perfect industry to do that. And it's, right. you know, people are spending their money on wireless devices. People are spending their money on getting information. I think it truly is a product that can change people's lives. Right? I think access to information is, is critical and key, and it's going to make us, from an education perspective, I think it gives kids an awesome opportunity. Um, we're in a much more global environment, market environment, where we're competing not just with you know, the student that's across the hall or the student that's in the desk next to us, but now we're competing with you know, people that are in India and China and, and have access to a lot of the same information we do. So how do we give our next generation the best access to the network so that they can learn and grow from it and at the same time spur the economic growth for the people today and, and create jobs? Right. So Jose, you actually raise a really good point as it relates to Spectrum. Um, you know, it's heard time and time again that Spectrum is the lifeblood of the wireless industry and it's important to to consider ways to build out this this very important resource that the wireless industry needs in order to to function so what are your thoughts around having companies help to build this infrastructure out do you see that as important and do you think that that's really necessary to be able to maintain 
um, the growth of the wireless industry and to make sure that companies are able to meet consumer demand. You know, it's a great point, and I think it's, it's, a, it's a delicate debate because when you debate spectrum, you know, obviously there's a cost of spectrum, but the bigger cost is the deployment of spectrum. So you want to, as a policy, be able to have diversity in spectrum and have a lot of different people own it and hold it, but the reality is that ultimately you want them to build it. And it can't just be, you know, somebody tries to buy spectrum because they think they're going to flip it and make a lot of money, but they're going to buy spectrum and ultimately put something on that spectrum and, and invest the dollars in building out that spectrum. You know, the reality is that the bigger companies today have more access to that capital to be able to do it, so it becomes a very challenging chess game to figure out, you know, how diverse can you get on spectrum versus how much of the spectrum has to go to the big, well-funded companies that are already big, mm -hmm. but have the capital to deploy it and put it in the hands of the citizens. So it's, it's you know, it's a, it's a tricky debate. We're not spectrum holders. Our company doesn't really, uh, we don't buy spectrum. We're not, we're not an owner of, or a wireless carrier, per se, but how we benefit is we actually build out the wireless network. So the Carriers don't build out their own wireless networks. They own them, but they don't build them out. So, you know, as a company, what we do is we build the cell towers, we install the equipment on the cell towers, put the antennas up on top, run the cables. We do all of the construction work affiliated with building out a wireless network. So as more spectrum gets adopted, there's going to be a need for more towers, more work, more equipment going on the towers, and that helps companies like ours create jobs on the construction side of that network deployment, which is going to take, you know, a really long time. And, you know, I'm a keen believer in that we're just going to see more and more data go through mobile devices, and there's going to continue to be technology shifts, as we saw from 2G to 3G and now, you know, 4G and LTE. I think there's going to be the next evolution of that. I think that's going to evolve rapidly as you get product and networks out there. And I think that's, uh, you know, that's what we need to figure out how to do better. Okay. So Mostech has been doing a lot of work in the wireless industry recently. I know that the company originally was uh, doing more work in the wireline space. So now that you have been able to see as much success as you have seen in the wireless industry, where, where do you see the company going in the future in terms of the opportunities that are available in wireless? And also, what are the opportunities for smaller companies, in your opinion, to be able to compete uh, in this industry that's that's growing quickly and that is really open for new competitors to come in and provide um, new opportunities for growth in this industry. So I think a couple of things. I think when you think of the industry, it's a huge industry, right? It's a it's probably a fifty to hundred billion dollar industry if you take all of the different components of it. If you take just the network, it's you know they're investing more than twenty five billion dollars a year annually in, in in expanding network, just the network side of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there's a lot of ways to play that, right? Obviously, you start with the ownership of the network, which is you know holding spectrum and ultimately being a, or, or being a wireless carrier, you know, all the way to some of the services that we provide, which is maintaining a cell site forever, right? Cutting the grass, painting the building, to the more sophisticated construction, which is building out the site and climbing the towers, putting antennas on the towers, putting the cable on the towers. But we're you know we're one component of that, and along the way, there's a lot of different ways to participate in the dollars that will ultimately be spent on, on the construction of wireless networks. So that's one side of it. So I think for business owners, the business that they're in, they have to understand the customer's needs and really go after either that niche market that they think they can serve well and, and, and differentiate their product. And then two, I do think there's a place for you know, spectrum ownership in, in more of a diverse base, but it's difficult. I, you know, I still think that the majority of the spectrum is going to go to the bigger guys just because they have the capital to deploy. But I do think that um, small business and minority businesses bring a lot to the table. So I think when, when they have opportunities to deploy and they have opportunities to start a network, you know, a lot of innovation comes from that. They, you know, they have to be innovative and, and lean and mean to survive and you know, good things happen from that. So I do think there's a place for them to play all the way through the ownership cycle, uh, but I also think we need to be cognizant of the fact that to play it's a huge capital requirement. So I think it's going to be a lot about joint ventures and partnerships and multiple companies coming together to really go after that space. I think that's how it has to happen. I don't think that a small business has the, can really afford to put the money in Spectrum and build out without having partners and partnerships in place that can help them do that.